Welcome to iLecture Online. In the previous video, we found the relationship between the distance from the origin to the lowest point on the cable in terms of the tension in the horizontal direction at that location and the tension at any other point on the cable, presumably at the end point where it's attached or any other point on the cable. And then we also discovered the relationship between a small difference in the x direction and a small difference along the direction of the cable. And we can see that dx was equal to ds divided by the square root of 1 plus s squared over c squared. Now the objective of this video is to relate x to s. We have to somehow have a relationship between the distance from the vertical axis y or from the x distance where the lowest point on the cable exists to some other point on the cable, presumably the attached point on the cable, and relate that to the length of the cable. Now, with this equation, what we can do is take the integral of both sides, or integrate both sides. So we integrate the left side from 0 to x. Notice x is the distance from there to where it's attached. And we take the integral ds from 0 to the length of the cable s. Taking the integral of the left side, we get x evaluated from 0 to x equals, when we take the integral of the right side, that is, of course, the inverse hyperbolic sine, which means we get c times the inverse hyperbolic sine of s over c evaluated from 0 to s along the length of the cable. Now, when we plug in the lower limit, we get the inverse hyperbolic sine of 0. What is that equal to? Well, it turns out that the hyperbolic sine of 0 is equal to 0, which means that the inverse hyperbolic sine of 0 is also equal to 0. Therefore, when we plug in the lower limit, we'll get 0. That means then that x is equal to c times the hyperbolic sine the inverse hyperbolic sine of s over c minus 0. Of course, when we rewrite that, we get the following. We get x is equal to c times the inverse hyperbolic sine of, and that would be s over c. But we don't want to express that in terms of the inverse hyperbolic sine. We want the hyperbolic sine. So what we do now is we divide both sides by c. And now we can, oh, I forgot the h here. Let me put the h down. There we go. And now we can reverse that. So therefore, we can conclude that s over c is equal to the hyperbolic sine of the quantity x over c. Or if I now multiply this through, I can say that s is equal to c times the hyperbolic sine of the ratio of x divided by c. And now we have our relationship between s and x. If you know x and you know c, you can find s. If you know s and know x, you can find c. If you know c and you find s, you can find x. In other words, there's three variables there. And even though we think of this as a constant, it will change in value depending upon the other parameters on the cable. And so here's some relationship that relates the distance, the horizontal distance, to the length of the cable, to the distance between the origin and the lowest point on the cable. And that's the equation we need for that. So slowly but surely, we'll get all the equations we need in order to solve the catenary. And at least you can see where the equations come from and why they are what they are. And that's how we do that.